With credits including Taxi Driver, American Gigolo, screenwriter and director Paul Schrader has earned a reputation for exploring characters on the edge of society. In his latest film, Light Sleeper, Willem Dafoe plays a drug run in the midst of a life crisis. We're pleased to have Paul Schrader here to talk about directing and screenwriting and an association with some of the best people in the film business. Welcome. Okay. Good to have you here. You. Uh, is Light Sleeper, first of all, which has been out for a little while, uh, is it, I mean, everybody talks mm. about this, you know, what's the connection? between, uh, in terms of principal character, and also the quality that you're expressing. Is it some kind of trilogy, is what I'm asking, with American Gigolo and Taxi Driver? Well, it's the uh, <clears throat> third installment of a character I've written about before, uh, which is a kind of man on the edge of society who has a job. He goes place to place. He looks in on other people's lives. He doesn't have one a life of his own. Um, He's he's looking for a change, but he doesn't know how to affect it. In fact, he, he's he's almost looking for a body. You know, it's almost like a soul looking for a body. And uh, when he was twenty, he was very angry, and he was a taxi driver. And when he got to be thirty, he was very narcissistic, and he was a gigolo. And now he's forty, and he's anxious, and he's got a dead end job as yeah. a, as a drug a delivery runner, boy. Right. <laughs> And, and where will he be when he's 50? Uh, I don't know. I, I ask, me, ask me in five yeah. years. You'll yeah. clearly come back. <laughs> I don't know. You know, it, 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 that's too far down. It's, that's a hypothetical. Yeah. Where was this idea for this drug, to, for, for Light Sleeper, born of? Where, what gave birth to it? Well, actually, uh, a dream? I, yeah, I, I hadn't written anything uh, original in a while. And I gave up sort of thinking about writing an original character, and I directed some scripts by other people and uh, adapted a few things. And then uh, a couple of years ago, uh, less than two years ago, I, I had a vivid dream. And I woke up and this man's face was right in front of me. And this was a man who was one of these boutique carriage trade uh, drug dealers. And uh, I woke up saying he wants me to write about him. And I realized that must have been what we were talking about in the dream. And uh, and, I, and, and it occurred to me that the character that I had been looking for had come and found me, and, and that the character was, in fact, me. And then hard upon that was the realization that it was the same character I had written about before. He was just getting older and uh, less secure. But are you saying that all, each of these characters is also you? Is, is, well, is uh, yeah. it an element of the personality? Well, I, I think that's fairly obvious, you know, that... Uh, uh, you, you, uh, you know, we do have to mine our own, our own cool. veins. Uh, yeah, okay, but that you can do that to a lesser or a greater degree. I mean, I seem to, you yeah. seem to be suggesting it's to a greater degree rather than to a lesser degree. I mean, all writers no, no, write no. of their own experience. No, I mean, I, 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 I've never had any of these occupations. Right. I've never had, uh, I've never been that kind of on, on the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, it's, it's metaphorically closer to me than it is um, mm -hmm. in the terms of the details. Which script are you proudest of? Raging Bull, Taxi Driver. Oh, yeah. script. Yeah, um, script. Where you delivered, whether you directed it yeah, or not. I, I like Taxi Driver. I like this new one, Light Sleeper. Um, that, that's that's hard to say. What is it about Taxi Driver that somehow it is a film that that continues to be played and talked about? Yeah. Well, it it much more than American Gigolo. Yeah. Sure. It it, um, it it went right to the core of. Uh, of something deep in the in the culture, and uh, it anticipated it and seized on it at the same time and defined it, uh, and then sort of entered into uh, the lexicon of uh, of great films. Uh, you know, who knows? You know, it's um, it's half luck, and the other half is um, probably luck too. <laughs> and, it, and do you think part of it is the fact that it, it was De Niro as well? That De Niro somehow yeah, well, was, was the right actor to define was, that role. Yeah, it was Bob and Marty and myself being in the right place, the right time, with the right amount of hunger, the right, am you mm. know. I've heard that he, that De Niro wanted to do it, and that in part he gave some real moment. Was it, was it that or Raging Bull that that he really wanted to do? Uh, uh, Marty has said that the Taxi Driver is uh, more my film, and Raging Bull is more Bob's film, and Last Temptation of Christ is more his film mm -hmm. of the three I wrote for Scorsese. Tell me about The Last Temptation of Christ. I mean, the, the, the extraordinary story about your father, 
Now, your father was trying to, <laughs> this is a great story. Your father's a fundamentalist, is he? Yes. Yeah. And he was <laughs> trying. Well, now, a lot of people, Last Temptation of Christ, you've got to remember, is a film that a lot of people did not want seen. Yeah. Some people didn't want seen. And so there was real organized sort of protest, and it was much debated, I think, Marty was on Nightline or something. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of discussion about it. Now, your father's calling you up saying, <laughs> where is it going? Well, my father doesn't really care about what I do. Uh, I, movies were forbidden when I was a child, and, and, and they still don't go to movies, and they don't care about movies. They don't care about that world. Yeah. So nothing I have done impresses him much. Uh, and uh, he never discusses uh, what I do for a living. He doesn't brag to his friends about my son, the screenwriter. He doesn't director. even talk about it with me. Yeah. So... Um, uh, and so I started getting these phone calls. He kept asking about this film and mm -hmm. where is it going to play and when is it going to come out. And finally, after the third time, I started to get suspicious. And I said, um, Dad, um, are you involved in this group that is trying to uh, stop this movie? <laughs> and he said, yes, but only locally. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I don't want you film in my neighborhood. Yeah. If as long as it doesn't come to Grand Rapids, yeah. that's that's all we need. All right, let's take a look. Light sleeper Willem Dafoe, uh, Dana Delaney is in this, and she plays Marjorie, who's his. Uh, he renews a relationship with her. Yeah. And then who else is in it? There's somebody who am I missing? Uh, my wife, Mary Beth Hurt. Yeah, Mary Beth Hurt's in it as well. Mm -hmm. Take a look at this. This is Light sleeper Willem Dafoe and Mary Beth Hurt and Dana Delaney. This is the end. It, it was wonderful, and I'm glad it happened this way. It will never happen again. You will not call me. You will not see me again. I'm happy for you. I, I'm... I wish you the best. I'm leaving. I, I shouldn't have left the hospital, but I, I don't regret it. Please get dressed and leave as soon as you can. I have a key. Bye. Marianne. It's my fault. I love you. I should point out about this movie is that, um, you had to put up some of your own bucks to get it made. It's like 26 studios turned it down? Well, there aren't 26 studios. Oh, oh 26, whatever they are. Companies, whatever. Companies. Uh, well, uh, Shows you what I know, yeah. doesn't it? Well, I, I was playing a kind of dangerous game. And, uh, and at a certain point, uh, uh, I had a cast, and I was starting to get the movie made, and I wasn't getting cash flow. And and it looked like it might be falling apart. And you had big, did, did you have Saren and, and I had both signed on by now? Well, I had them. I had their word, but I hadn't paid them any money. Therefore, right. I didn't have them locked right. down. Right. And uh, I remember something that Copa Francis had said to me once. He said, "You know, he said, just start making a movie. At some point, people will believe you will, you are making it, and will pay you to make it." And so I just announced that we were going to start pre-production. And, uh, and I financed it out of pocket for about four weeks until I, I ran out of out of pocket funds. And uh, fortunately, right about that time, the money did come in. So Francis was right. Francis was right. I did get reimbursed. Uh, so I am not yeah. a, uh, an investor. You got reimbursed for the amount of money that you put in. Yeah. That was uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? Is directing easy? Uh, if you've got great stars, if you cast the thing well. It's not, it's not as hard as you think it is. Uh, actually, I think uh, I'm going to teach directing again right. starting tomorrow at Columbia. Uh, actually, I think that almost anybody can direct a movie. You know, if, if you get You've the got right, a good cinematographer. If you get the right support system, you know, yeah. uh, they, they can ghost direct a movie right around you. Uh, it's hard to do a good movie. You know, it's hard to have that kind of uh, clarity and uh, decisiveness all day long that allows you to come out with a coherent energetic film at the end. But if you just want to get through it, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to have you here. Are you in New York for a while? Then you're going to be teaching in Columbia? Ten years. You've always lived here? No, it's just the last ten years. Oh, the last ten years. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've been, you've been here for a while. I admit. Yeah. That. You um, born in where, where in the middle? Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's right. You and Jerry Ford, huh? Yeah, absolutely. 
You, you, used, to, you used to come to my high school. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd love to have you come back sometime. Uh, I love Mishima. Mishima is the correct yeah. pronunciation because I was always fascinated by him, and it, obviously you were. And that's one of your favorite films? Yeah, it is. It is my favorite. Okay, film. good to have you here. Thanks, Thanks very much. Light Sleeper is a film. Tomorrow night, uh, Camille Paglia, who shook up the politically correct word, correct world with her controversial book, Sexual Persona, offers some of her views on sex and art and the American culture. See you then. Thanks for joining us tonight.